Thank you all, all colleagues and friends of the Baltic Sea that you have joined this parallel session number three of this, this today's webinar. And the theme is responsible consumption for life below water. So, which is, so we are enhancing the UN Sustainable Development Goals 12 and, and 14 and discussing these goals, especially in these sessions. And uh, uh, may I have the next slide, please? So just briefly, I guess most of you know what the Baltic Sea Challenge is. So it's a network of, of knowledge and support for concrete actions at local level for protecting the Baltic Sea. And it's founded and coordinated by the cities of Helsinki and Turku for, for more than 10 years already. And our vision is a clean, productive and shared Baltic Sea. And so may I have the next slide, please. Oh, well, that's we already uh, what I mentioned about the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals where we are. And so we are trying to enhance these goals in many ways. And with not just the cities, but with all our partners. Uh, now we are going to hear four examples, four presentations on uh, on uh, on projects activities surveys on the baltic sea and uh, and uh well would you put a slide with uh, with a guy sitting on the sofa please so there we are so just uh, just uh, how how to work and cooperate here so if you see your video you will be seen so I ask you all to, to, to switch off your, your cameras, your videos, and only use it when you are speaking so that if you want to be seen, and as well your microphones so that there won't be any disturbance when somebody's speaking or giving a presentation. And, uh, but you are welcome to, to use them when you have something to say. And so keep the microphone mute. And if you want to, uh, after each presentation, you have a chance to ask a, a a short question or two so then raise your hand if you are if you have something to ask so and then i will give you the floor to you or then you can write your question into the chat and then i will come back to it after the presentation and as mentioned so these uh, these discussions the whole webinar will be recorded and will be published later on the on the baltic sea challenge web pages and uh, if you take one slide backwards, Tuve, please. Just forgot to 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 mention that uh, the action plan that we have been working on it, Turku and Helsinki, for some 15 years now almost. So of course we update it every now and then, and the the latest updated action plan is for the years 2019 and 2023. So which we are living now, and we have the uh, five major goals, five ways of action for the benefit of the Baltic Sea. And you can see that on the, on the slide there, clear coastal waters, coastal waters of, of utmost importance for us, healthy marine ecosystem, clean and safe water traffic, systematic water area management, and a, an active Baltic Sea citizenship so that we would all be aware of our sea. That's, I guess, the background for everything. But then if we take a uh, go into the program of the day, and I may, may have the slide to where we have the presentations, they will see. So, well, I did not introduce myself. My name is Mika Akkan, and I work as a manager of international affairs of the city of Turku in the mayor's office. And you already met the mayor, Minna, earlier this morning. And I'm glad to host you here So for one hour and 15 minutes now. But as I mentioned, we will have uh, four presentations here today, which are all related to, to the, the issue responsible consumption for life below water from various angles, and, uh, but basically discussing the same things. So what we can do for our sea. And uh, we will start by, uh, with Professor Kari Hyytiäinen from the University of, of Helsinki. And he will tell us about the long-term prospects of blue tourists in the Baltic Sea region. 
and he will give us a 10 minute presentation. I am strict on the 10 minutes. I warn you, Kari. And after the presentation, if there are any questions, so we have some five minutes for, for a discussion. But now, so I will sm switch myself off and, uh, and Kari, the stage is yours, please. Uh, thank you, Mika. Can I have the next slide, please? So um, I will give a snapshot of, of an exercise that, that um, we made on, on, on long-term long prospects of, of blue tourism in the Baltic Sea region. Um, blue tourism is, is the type of tourism that, that uh, relies on, on nearby aquatic environments, on, on nearby sea or, or lakes. Um, and can I have the next slide, please? And, but before we go to the details, let me give you some, some overall uh, figures on, on, on development of tourism, in particular pool tourism. So um, tourism has been one of the largest and, and fastest growing industries during the past um, 10 years. The annual growth rate has been 5%, which is a huge percent, percentage globally. And of course, last year and this year, there has been a, a big drop in, um, in, in particular in, um, in the international traveling. But it's expected that um, when we get rid of the current, the current crisis, then uh, tourism will be um, uh, uh, um, very popular again. Uh, if we look on our marine environments and, and, uh, and, and disciplines and, and, and and businesses there, uh, tourism is the second big, big largest sector after after the maritime sector. And but there's of course a lot of challenges and uh, for 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 that business. Um, tourism it uh, only it, it represents um, of um, something like eight percent of the all greenhouse gas emissions globally. So it's it's a big polluter. It has also um, negative uh, ecological consequences and, and also might, may have uh, negative social and, and cultural impacts on, on, on locally. And, and the, in, in some areas which are very popular, um, tourism is not very much favored by the local population. And that, that is a big challenge how to change the, the attitude. Uh, the, uh, the aim is to, to try to change the negative footprint of tourism to, to positive hand, handprint, which means that the ecological implications are, are minimized and, and also then the tourism is, is changed to, to a format where it, it has some, um, where local population accepts it and it, 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 it gives something for, for the local population as also, also culturally. Uh, also, we know that the climate is changing, that is inevitable, and uh, it's expected that the relative competitiveness of northern areas, for example, Baltic Sea area, is expected to increase in, in the future. So it, it, climate change is, is a threat, of course, for, for globally, but relatively it, it may increase the, uh, the position of, of this industry in, in the Baltic Sea region. Can I have the next one, please? So the question in in the, our exercise was to, was to, to explore what opportunities and, and risks may the future hold for the development of, of tourism at the local scale. And we used the Helsinki and the capital area of Finland as a case study area. And uh, we did this exercise as a, as a, as a co-creation um, workshop project where a number of stakeholders, actors in, in the field of tourism together uh, consider the future prospects. And, and we uh, leaned on, on long-term scenarios um, which allowed us to, to look on, on long-term developments and, and allow strategic planning. And, and these scenarios, they were not used as a, as a tools to forecast. We, we don't see know what is going to happen in, in the future, but rather like, like um, describing plausible and logical futures and, and what 
those um, possible futures may hold for, for tourism in the, locally. Can I have the next one, please? So we looked on, on a very long time horizon, um, 90 years, the whole, whole, whole century. And why so long time horizon? There are two reasons. We used the, the, the scenarios that, that have been developed by the climate scientists and, and to make the, the results comparable, we use the same time horizon. The second reason is that uh, when we are building the infrastructure now for tourism development, much of those buildings uh, uh, will, will remain af after 100 years. So actually we are making the future now. And um, in, in the process there were like four tasks to, to do. First one is to, to identify what were the major drivers that affect on, on, on tourism. And then the next step was to extend um, this selected global scenarios at, at local scale in Helsinki, Helsinki region and, and for tourism. After that, the groups, the stakeholders develop visions then, then, then where we want to be or could be in, in, in 100 years from now. And, and the last step was to develop transition pathways, um, chain of activities, um, policy um, initiatives and, and so forth, which are necessary for vision to make, make realize. Can I have the next one, please? Uh, we relied on the shared socioeconomic pathways um, developed by the climate scientists. And they feature five different global futures, which represent different um, challenges for mitigating the climate change or, or challenges to adapt, adapt to the climate change. And, and these have been very widely used in, in global scale, but they are also applicable at, at the local scale. And we focused on, 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 uh, on two extreme cases. SSP1, which is the sustainability uh, scenario, taking the green road, uh, featuring an um, open society um, which focuses on, 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 on using responsibly produced services rather than products. And, and then SSP3, which is called regional rivalry, which means the more close society and, and, and world situation where the, the probability of, of international crisis is high and, and so forth. And next one, please. And now I'll give some snapshot of the results for, for the SSP1, which is for the uh, sustainability scenario. This is the scanner, a vision that the um, stakeholders created um, where we want to be. And it pretty much focuses on, on, on developing on, on meaningful experiences for, for the tourism. And, uh, and, and not, to, not to aim at, at very high um, number of tourism, but rather to, to, to focus on, on, on quality and also the, the type of tourism that is acceptable for, for the local population and, and, and give something for the local population as well. And the next one, please. Uh, this is a, a figure showing um, the results on, on the transition pathways. It shows the timeline, uh, timeline from the current situation uh, to the vision by, by, by the end of the century. And it, it consists of, of a number of, of different initiatives, policy initiatives, uh, uh, investments in infrastructure or other developments, which then the stakeholders thought that are necessary for us to, to create the, the requirements for, for successful blue tourism in, in, in the Helsinki region. And and there were land use planning and, and marine spatial planning was an important issue. Um, also um, development of um, infrastructure, but also a development of, of, of um, tourism industry, like internally. And the next slide, please. And uh, as, as a summary, the main recommendations from the, this work that 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 we were, were found out were um, applied to the whole society. Sorry, one one minute. Your final remarks. 
Yeah, yeah. So this is the the last last slides showing the results. So uh, two first recommendations apply for the Finnish society and uh, and and underline the importance of um, to reduce pollution, to to retain the Baltic Sea in, in good environmental state, but also on, on land use planning to reserve enough enough space, coastal area and, and marine space for for potential future uses, including tourism development. And the two last recommendations applied for the tourism sector itself. The need to monitor and analyze uh, ecological, social and cultural indicators in, in coordinated manner. And also to establish a forum where the tourism industry actors can, can create a common understanding on what global sustainability means and, and what is it, 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 what kind of opportunities it creates for the industry. So, thank you. And this was part of the Blue Ada project, and, and more information can be found from the web pages. Thank you, Kari. And uh, uh, thank you for this uh, kind of a more academic approach to, to the issue. So, are there, are there any questions or comments to, to Kari? So, please raise your hand or, or write into the chat. So, we have a couple of minutes for that. But, so, while you're, while you're still uh, so thinking, so I would maybe post the first question to Kari, just to, as I mentioned, this uh, kind of uh, academic uh, approach. So, how do you see the, the, uh, from the political or city planning side or so, uh, uh, is a municipality like Helsinki, is it a mature for adapting the scenario you have or, or the recommendations you have? And how long is the path from, from uh, the things that you have been seen until something so real, practical, concrete happens? Yeah, thank you. Yes, actually, the whole exercise starts from where we are now, from the status quo in in in, in, in tourism sector and and also in, in all legislation and and, and regulations, and uh, and there's a lot of programs, ongoing programs, which are all already creating the requirements for for sustainable blue tourism to, to to develop, and in this SSP one sustainable world situation, it in the stakeholders felt it necessary that those processes will be like um, finalized and, and, and also implemented accordingly. So there's um, pretty much ongoing work which uh, gives a good direction for us. But of course, there are many other things that need to be done after, after that. And so I, I, I think there's um, there's a pretty much effort done also already, and 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 it's a, the um, challenge is to 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 keep on on a good track also in, in the future. Okay, thank you, thank you, Kari, for answering my question. So, I don't see any any questions. So, uh, Anukka yeah, has raised her hand. So please, Anukka, the stage is yours. Uh, hi, <laughs> yes, uh, this uh, forum for tourism actors sounds really interesting. I was just wondering if it's already taken some steps forward to create something like this. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, there have been some discussions on that. And of course, there are already like um, different kind of forums where the industry can um, Discussions on issues, but uh, the issue is that um, the tourism industry it, it includes um, ex enterprises of different sizes, and it's uh, it's uh, hotels, it's um, program organizers, uh, a large number of of, of different ent enterprises, uh, and uh, and the participants felt that um, there might be even like broader forum, pro need for broader for forums that. Uh, that are available at, at, the, at the moment. But no, in concrete terms, no, no new initiatives. Right, thank you. 
Okay, thank you, Kari, for your presentation and the, the answers, uh, clarifying answers to these questions. So then we'll go forward. And it was uh, the last question was uh, asked by, by Annuka Pekkarinen, who is the CEO and founder of Napaland Limited, which is a small sized company still today, very small, running multi day sailing tours and holidays in the archipelago. And uh, and which is quite a uh, how would I say demanding sustainability goals and 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 uh, challenges as well and and uh, Annuko has promised to give the next presentation so we will hear an entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur's story now so please Annuko yes hello so um, to explain a little bit our background. So I have a background in marine biology and maritime environmental research and my partner is a naval architect which might uh, explain why we have such ambitious goals for our sustainability running this uh, tourism company. But uh, so yeah you can actually take this next slide I will um, try to introduce you to Napaland which is a uh, it's a new company uh, we started in October 2020 so just a couple of months ago really and we started partly due to the COVID-19 situation uh, we are looking ways to adapt our uh, previously existing business into this new world situation uh, promoting Baltic Sea traveling a little bit closer and a little bit smaller uh, vessel and um, but still keeping this kind of destination seldom traveled which has been our um, brand really previously so we were doing sail and ski tours and uh, Greenland expeditions before and now we have landed here in the Baltic and trying to develop something here and uh, we joined this Baltic Sea Challenge Network also very recently now in January 2021 and we are really quite excited to be with uh, next slide, please. So uh, we are aiming to develop trips here in the Baltic Sea on a sailing ship Beer. Um, that's how you say it in Icelandic. We are an Icelandic Finnish company and um, this ship used to be called Arctica for the last five years. Uh, she's built in Holland in 1993. Original name was Beer, so we are going towards the original name. It is bad luck to change the name of the ship, so that's um, that's why. Um, she is currently under Icelandic flag and we are in the middle of uh, registering her to Finland, trying to look into that. And um, so she has been operating in the coast of Norway, Iceland and Greenland before. And um, she is really quite a beauty and uh, we like to think of her as kind of a movable backcountry hut or a summer cabin almost. Um, so we are not aiming to do some kind of hardcore offshore sailing trips, even though she is a very seaworthy vessel and capable of doing such trips as well. And uh, next slide, please. So as I said, we are looking into transferring the vessel to the Finnish transport registration and so on. We're making route plans for the summer and doing research for the necessary infrastructure, which is um, a little bit, uh, of course, a trick because the vessel is a bit larger than like a usual sailboat. And uh, we're looking also for a home port on the Finnish coast. Same thing, we need kind of a sturdy pier. And uh, main thing really is to try to build the sustainability in our operation from the start because it's a lot easier to do like that to start sustainably instead of trying to correct our actions later on and next please okay so then to our goals we like to use as little energy as possible to begin with because obviously as mentioned before in one of the presentations the carbon emissions of tourism are quite high so we use on our behalf obviously like we cannot really affect the <laughs> flight miles of the tourism uh, is except for compensating the carbon but we on board our ship we can use the sails whenever we can to drive the boat um, we still need some 
fuel for, for example, heating and uh, cooking and general electricity production. Uh, we would like to produce as much energy as possible with wind generators and solar panels and so on and store this energy into batteries. We already, of course, have batteries and it's we do not have to run our generator the whole time. We can store some of the power produced in the batteries and then run on that. And eventually we want to stop using diesel and gasoline and carry sustainable non-fossil fuels in our tanks. That is really the, <laughs> the challenge. So next slide, please. Uh, in short term, we could look into solutions like biodiesel. This is something that exists already and uh, it's, it is almost uh, readily usable in our engines. And uh, we could also try to find this kind of non-fossil alternatives for any other petroleum products that we use on board, lubrication oil and so on. And also we have gasoline outboard motors that we use for our dinghy to go on land when we are at anchor and we could replace those with electric motors. And next slide, please. In the longer term, or let's call it the medium term, because this is of course an urgent matter, we would like to replace all of our petroleum products with synthetic um, fuel that uh, and use sort of electric motors for propulsion and what we or my partner really who is the engineer <laughs> in this business is looking into for example methanol some liquid alcohol um, there's several reasons why this would be interesting is um, because it's it is in liquid form so we wouldn't need to install any kind of high pressure tanks for example on board but it's relatively safe and easy to handle even in kind of normal tanks that we have on board at the moment and uh, such alcohol could of course the important part is how you produce it whether or not whether it's produced from for example some kind of wood material or with some kind of process that is using for example industrial emission carbon or just simply taking it from the air or water or whatnot so this is and of course the availability of such fuel, that's a big deal. So even if we manage to install this kind of equipment on board, we would of course need to make sure that it is accessible, whichever fuel it will be. But uh, this is really exciting, exciting topic. And um, other sustainability goals that we have, um, we are finding out possibilities to use non-toxic anti-falling. I believe that we are going to have a whole interesting presentation about that next. And um, generally supporting this kind of living archipelago and the business environment in the Finnish archipelago is really something that we're interested in. So to be part of a network of actors who are keeping the archipelago area living and sustainable. Uh, the red part, the recycling and septic waste reception points is in red because this is really an urgent matter for us to solve and it is uh, kind of one of the day-to-day -day parts which are I would have to say that it is still quite quite challenging in the, the archipelago even though it has been a rule and a law for a long time that you are not allowed to put anything in the sea and we do not we have uh, tanks for also that grey water is stored on board and then left ashore whenever we manage to find a place where to do that and um, then, as I mentioned, this uh, international tourism and flights. I mean, obviously, we think that the archipelago is a fantastic area to promote also for international tourism. But really, um, whatever we do on board, um, if we have 10, 12 people who fly in uh, several thousands of miles, then of course, we need to find a way to compensate this kind of uh, carbon emission as well. So looking into this is also part of our work. And I believe this was my last slide. Yes. So here is our information. We have a website and Instagram account that you can go and check out if you would like to know more.
thank you, Anuka, for your, your presentation. And now again, we have a couple of minutes for, for any questions or comments to, to Anuka. Are there any? If they are, so raise your hand or, or write into the, the chat. And uh, anyway, so again, I, I would take the opportunity to ask a question. So, uh, so your business is not, not a large scale business, but it certainly can provide living to a couple of people and, and, and similar entrepreneurs could be found in the archipelago. Uh, but uh, is the main challenge now the kind of uh, harbor infrastructure, which is it's, it's, so even your kind of vessel, which is not the biggest at all, it seems to be too big for, for the, the, the ports. So what is, what is kind of your message to the authorities and partners? Um, I, I think the biggest problem at the moment is really the septic waste reception. If you have a vessel where also the grey water goes into the tanks, the amount of uh, waste that we would need to leave at the port is quite large. So, and when we have infrastructure in the archipelago, which is meant for smaller sailing boats that would leave very small amounts of septic waste and maybe their grey water goes into the sea. It is for us a big major challenge to find a reception facility that can take such volume. Oh yes, yes. So there are still lots of things to, to be solved. There is a question from the, the audience, the participants. Sonia Palahus from the Regional Council of Southwest Finland asks if you, would you make the tours also in other seasons than summer? Have you considered that yet? Ah, absolutely. We would um, like to make them from early spring until the late autumn. We really think that the autumn and almost early winter in the Baltic Sea is really fantastic. There's uh, the archipelago is really quiet and still, you know, the weather is quite beautiful until October, even November. So that's definitely something we want to do. And any any further questions? So so if not, then we thank Annuka for her presentation and and wish you good luck with your your project. Thank you. And then we take an uh, another example, another presentation from our entrepreneur, the CEO, the founder of SeaBoost Limited, Christian Fyodorov, will tell about their action to promote biocide free boating in the archipelago sea. So if Christian is ready, so please you can begin. Thank you. Thank you. Hello to all, all of you. So uh, the act initiations behind this act is Seabust OU and BNG Palvelu OU, uh, which provides uh, brush and goat, uh, go boat wash services. And, and, um, and can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. And the uh, Myrkyton Act, Bioseed Free Act, is, is, is all about promoting usage of hard 100% bioseed free coatings, uh, which are, are safe to brush and safe to use without uh, leaking out um, uh, compounds like, like toxins and, and also microplastics. Um, and we want to uh, bring together supply and demand and we want to share information about suppliers, methods, and generally how to keep your bottoms clean or both bottoms clean without toxins. And uh, we want to uh, welcome all service providers to, 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 to this movement. Next slide, please. And as you may know, the problem is uh, bioseeds used in, 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 in um, anti-falling paints and also uh, soft coatings that erode to the sea and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, very often a big part of, of the coatings um, consists of microplastics and, and this all, all goes out to the sea when we dry the boat and when we clean the boat holes. And um, the main bioseeds that I use today are, are copper and zinc, and, and, and this is a big, big, big problem. Can I have next slide, please? 
And the status of change towards non-toxic antifouling is, is more or less stuck right now in, in an ongoing process. Um, we had an EU bonus project uh, ending in, in 19, uh, 2017 and um, and uh, it gave uh, gave some some guidelines for 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 the uh, authorities in in countries um, uh, around the baltic sea how to proceed with 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 this uh, this uh, uh, anti issue but unfortunately we still lack clear steps um, and, uh, and and unfortunately, even old legislation as laws against contamination of soil has not been followed at, at, at all parts in, 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 in harbors and marinas and unfortunately even on city owned areas. Can I have the next one? And uh, also new problems arise. And, uh, and the main reason is that we are washing our boats more and more. And uh, if we don't have uh, hard uh, resistant um, coatings on, 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 on the boats, then it's not so safe to wash, wash the boats. And, and, uh, and uh, boats are still delivered from factories with bioseeds and then nobody really, really uh, knows what to do and, and when this change is going to take part. And every, every boat painted today is, is, is usually a, an object for a long-term uh, repainting because uh, you, you won't uh, um, um, renovate your house very often. It's usually with 10 years intervals that you do, do this job. Can I have the next one? Uh, this uh, picture describes a little bit of the problem. So this is a motorboat with 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 an um, anti falling paint uh, bioseed based paint in the end of the year and uh, as you can see in the back part of the boat and uh, also under the rails and, and and the parts of the hull which are 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 an object of of, of more turbulences in the water uh, uh, the paint doesn't function as it should and um, and uh, and then we have falling in this case barnacles attached to the to to the to the uh, hull, and yes, unfortunately, boaters will uh, wash their hulls if if they look like this because um, uh, this this creates friction in the water and and, and uh, increases uh, fuel consumption consumptions and 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 and. Um, in the next video, you are going to see how it looks when you brush your boat under the water and, and, and also with, with, with uh, soft paints and, and uh, um, anti-falling paints. And also, to some extent, you can, you can understand that when you drive the boat, it's happening the same thing. So there are big amounts of, of, of um, uh, coating coming off from, from the hull. And in this case, it's the brush, but it's also the turbulence from the water that is tearing off of paints when you dry the boat. And this is what we want to prevent. Can I have the next slide? Thank you. Uh, there are many, many proven bioseed free methods available already now at the market. And, and, and there are brushes, there are special brushes, uh, there are in water brushes that you can brush. Up, up to four point uh, boats with a beam up to 4.5 meters in water. There are uh, boat wash services both in water and at land. Uh, in water, you can you can clean up to 60 meter long boats uh, at the moment, and uh, there are hull covers uh, which you can keep your uh, hulls clean. Uh, for more than 80% of, of all boats in, in Finland are suitable for the hull covers. Uh, you can use dry docks, you can use ultrasonic systems, etc. etc. And in the next video, um, uh, uh, we are presenting some of the solutions uh, provided by, by Seaboost OU and also Brush and Go Boat Wash Services. Start the video, please.
I'm, I'm starting it. It's it just takes a few seconds before. OK, it's... thank you. So you can tell about what we will see in a second. Yeah, so here we, we are going to see hull covers, uh, hull brushes, in water hull brushes and, and then then uh, coatings that are, 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 are easy to keep clean and hard and also boat washers, how, how they function. So now it seems that it's loaded. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just put one forward. It, it worked before, but. OK, can, did you pre press the play button? There. Ah. There, now. So here you see when you drive a boat on a hull, hull cover that, that cleans the, the, the hull. And. Um, <laughs> OK, it doesn't seem to work, but you can go and see the videos on, on, on Seaboost web pages and and, uh, and and you can go and, and look at brush and goes um, both wash, uh, web pages. So, so you will see there how, how, how they work. Uh, all these methods have one common challenge. Uh, they all required hard, durable, busy free coatings that are safe to brush uh, without uh, removing uh, soft compounds and uh, bio seeds and, 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 and the microplastics. And uh, as I told you before, uh, when you choose the coating for your boat, it's, it's, it's most often a platform for a long term use because repainting is. is, is, is uh, done with the same type of, of, of coating and and, uh, and, and you, you seldom renovate the house uh, more often than in 10 years and in intervals. Can I have the next one? And um, the first actions has been taken. We have opened uh, a web page myrkyttömästivesillä.fi uh, to share information about this issue. And right now we are gathering companies involved to, to, to join us and, uh, and, um, and we have printed stickers for motors uh, so they can display that they have detoxed their house, boat house. And uh, these stickers can also be used as a sign uh, for, for uh, boat clubs, um, 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 uh, boat washers uh, as a sign that 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 the boat can be safely washed. One, one minute to go, Christian. Yeah, that it's safe to wash, and we 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 hope that as many as possible will 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 share this information and 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 uh, join us, and also also um, for a broad support support. Uh, next one. Together, we think we can make this happen, or we don't think we know we can make this happen. And the next one. OK, thank you. And uh, you can find more information about Seaboost and Boatwash at, at, at this address, seaboost.fi and boatwash.fi. And, um, and there you also can find the videos that we, <laughs> we were not able to play to you today. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. And now it's time again to 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 ask us questions if there are any. Now, Vivi Vendelin, it so you have raised your hand, so please. Yes, thank you for a presentation and uh, nice to hear that you have these uh, more sustainable options for the boat hulls. But still, uh, you did you you find already these uh, people who are owning boats who trust that it can be as good as these old traditional poisonous <laughs> coatings? Uh, at least I have that picture that they are really keen on those. Unfortunately, yes. And uh, but as you can see from from also from the picture I, I showed you. Uh, 
uh, biocides are not uh, a, a solution for 100% clean house. Uh, uh, there will be falling all, all, also on these this, this, um, uh, uh, coatings. And, and this is mainly because of the erosion. When you drive with the boat, the fast boats, you, you will wear off the, 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 the coating and then the uh, organism and, and, and the barnacles will get attached to the uh, primers and underlying uh, coatings. And, um, and for sure, we have much, much of tests also. For example, Seaboost's uh, power brush and power turf has been uh, uh, tested with brilliant test results and, and actually so good test results that you can't receive this kind of uh, results with, 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 with bioseeds. So, so um, uh, I think it's more, more about habits than, 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 than an issue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vivi, for your question. So, Christian, uh, today, how would you describe how broadly can these uh, biocide free cleaning services be found in the archipelago sea? So, so it's certainly a question of attitude, but uh, is it easy to get a service if you really want? Yeah, if you want uh, uh, your boat washed, there, this boatwash.fi uh, is, is providing um, boat wash services and, and they are, they are, 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 are um, uh, uh, they have a room uh, uh, and mobile um, uh, boat washer, so they, they will tour um, along the coast and you can find the uh, times and, 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 and places where they are visiting from, from their websites. And there is one uh, stationary big boat wash in, 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 in Hanko, but you can use a hull cover, for example, uh, this power brush, uh, power turf you can use in any harbor where you have, have your boat uh, and, uh, and you can use a hull brush anywhere. And for example, uh, uh, let's say an uh, average boat of, of, of uh, six meters, it takes about 20 minutes to, to, to take it clean with the power brush. And it's not a big issue if you uh, compare it to spending uh, several hours every spring uh, um, service painting uh, bioseeds on, on your hull. So you can clean easily the boat uh, four times in the season with, with less, less efforts than, than painting it. Oh yes, indeed. That was not nice to, and interesting to hear. But so thank you, Christian, for this very so concrete example for action for a cleaner Baltic Sea. Can, can I have one, one word? Uh, of course, of course. There yes. is a spe spelling error. Error. It's seaboost, not seasboost.fi in, in, in the address. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's okay. a very, very, very important remark. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, thank you. Thank you. And, and, uh, and so we go further to our fourth and final presentation. So uh, uh, lecture Hanna Mari, Maria Uliruusi from the Turku University of Applied Sciences will tell about, us about the advanced chemical training for so-called eco supporters in the city of Turku in our, in our organization. So if Hanna Maria you're ready so please you can start. Thank you. May I share my uh, my own screen? Now it's it's for Tuve, who is our backstage manager. So it's up to you to decide. Uh, yeah, we uh, agreed with Tuve that I can yeah. I can just, share it. Just a sec, I had just forgotten. So yes, you're welcome. You can so share. just tell me when you see the presentation. Can you see it now? Yes. Excellent. So uh, thank you for this opportunity to join this seminar and uh, tell about advanced chemical training for eco supporters. Uh, these training materials that I present uh, today, uh, they have been developed to the eco supporters of the city of Turku. However, uh, this training kit can be used by everybody in Finland. Uh, it's in Finnish. Um, and there will be similar uh, materials available soon 
around the Baltic Sea. I will tell more about this in the, in the end of my presentation. So my name is uh, Hanna Maria Ulerosi, and I come from the Turku University of Applied Sciences. And the uh, city of Turku is the biggest shareholder of the Turku University of Applied Sciences with 91% of shares. We have 10,000 students, 70 degree programs and 2,000 professional graduates every year. I myself come from the water and environmental engineering research group. And um, uh, as city of Turku's mayor Minna Arve in her keynote already uh, mentioned, um, we have a long history uh, with my university uh, uh, in cooperating with the city of Turku. For example, in sustainability issues and especially with the issues important to the Baltic Sea. Uh, my research group uh, and the city of Turku, we cooperate among other things to reach the goals of the Baltic Sea Challenge Action Plan of the city of Turku. And uh, in this action plan, among many different activities targeted to improve the state of the Baltic Sea, one activity sets a target to educate city of Turku's eco-supporters about hazardous substances. Uh, I have mentioned eco-supporters quite many times already. So, so um, who are eco-supporters? Um, I see them as ambassadors of sustainability in a workplace. Uh, this uh, this eco-supporter system is an operating model for more ecological working environment. And um, the model is such that one or more eco-supporters are appointed and trained for uh, every working community, for example, departments inside the organization, like for example, city of Turku. And alongside their regular duties, eco-supporters will offer instructions and motivation to their fellow uh, colleagues for environmental work. Eco-supporters are trained and uh, the basic training focuses, uh, for example, on environmental issues broadly, reducing the environmental load of the work and uh, changing standards and operating procedures in a more environmentally friendly direction. The work of eco-supporters includes, for example, formulating recycling instructions for individual workplaces, disseminating inf information, uh, and uh, for example, raising environmental issues at uh, work meetings. Eco-supporters can be found in Finnish municipalities, and uh, public organizations and also from municipalities in Estonia and Russia. And this operational model was created in 2006 by the city of Helsinki. Today, uh, we have more than 4,100 eco-supporters trained. So, um, in addition to this eco-supporters basic training, which I described, shortly. City of Turku wanted advanced training for their eco-supporters about hazardous substances. So our university's task was to develop and prepare a training kit for this purpose. The task was done as a part of non has City 2 project uh, with the financial support from the Interreg Baltic Sea Region program the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Employment in Finland and the city of Turku. And you can get familiar with the project via these links. Uh, we have done a lot of other issues as well that are related to uh, reduction of hazardous substances. And if you are interested uh, about such an issue, so please check the website. So this training package, training kit, uh, that we prepared includes four topics 
Uh, first is introduction to hazardous substances, which gives information about what kind of chemicals we use and how hazardous substances get to our environment and in our bodies, and what can be the health and environmental risks of hazardous substances. We have chapters about both chemical smart home and chemical smart working place, uh, where you can find a lot of useful information about how to deal with hazardous substances in home and in the workplace. And then the fourth topic presents how to take hazardous substances into account when buying products and services in public organizations. So here uh, you can see some examples about the materials that we have uh, produced. So materials include uh, videos about specific hazardous substances, what they are, uh, what kind of health and environmental risks they might uh, have and how to avoid them. We have infographs and posters that you can you can print to your workplace. And uh, those include information about hazardous substances in our everyday environment. Also, we have info cards that you can use to test if you have myths about chemicals. Um, each card includes a statement about the chemicals and you can test if you know if the statement is true or false. So you can bust your chemical myths. We organized also an online training uh, for uh, eco supporters of the city of Turku last November. And uh, our purpose was to give uh, first of all, uh, this advanced training, and then, of course, to test our materials. And uh, the wor uh, workshop included, for example, exper expert presentations about hazardous chemicals and and smart public um, chemical smart public procurement. Also, we had group discussions, for example, about how to communicate chemical issues in the workplace. And most of the participants thought that the training was very useful and also they saw that they can and will uh, utilize the materials that have been uh, uh, have been uh, made available for them. So uh, materials that I have now presented are available in Finnish, but there will be training materials uh, available in Russian, Estonian, Lithuanian, Latvian in uh, March this spring. So you can follow up the launch schedule from the website of this, this link here in the web uh, presentation. And if you have questions about these materials, uh, you can contact my colleague Odrone. Her contact information is, is um, available here in, in this slide. So, thank you. Thank you, Hanna Maria, for your presentation. And again, now it's time for 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 questions. If you if anybody has any. Uh, well, it seems that this uh, training kit, these materials, they are so quite easy to be disseminated in in well any kind of a of a organization, and uh, and. Uh, but I would like to ask, uh, so if you want to to follow the results or monitor them, is it uh, so up to the organization itself or have you done anything like that, for example, in our organization, the city of Turku? That's a good question. So uh, our task was to produce the materials and what we are now going to do during this spring is we are going to train eco supporter coordinators of in Finland and we will give them training how to utilize these materials and then it's up to municipalities and organizations with eco supporters to to um, uh, take these steps forward so we we don't have yet tools to to um, track how how these trainings are uh, will go uh, in Finland, but that's a great idea. We should discuss uh, with the coordinators 
somehow that that we could share information how 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 these materials are utilized in in different municipalities thank you is anybody else wanting to comment on the presentation by by hanna maria so no no further questions okay thank you hanna maria for your, your presentation and the the university of applied sciences of turku so this was the the final uh presentation of the four that we had today but we are not yet quite in the end of of this session so i would still like you all the all the participants of this uh of uh this uh uh, session to uh, use a couple of minutes to to uh, go to you will see on the screen the the address www.menti.com to menti and uh, use the code that is seen there 9879622 and go and uh, give your kind of uh, which keywords appear into your mind of this session and this 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 whole webinar and in the word cloud the what's important on your mind concerning responsible consumption for life below water and these words that you write there we will be seeing then in the afternoon session then and we will discuss these issues which the participants seem to be the most important ones and and you will see the uh, in the chat as well how to go to to menti i guess many of you have already used it and it's it's a very simple application so uh, that's what i want you to do now, now or during the the lunch break that we are going to have soon so you have have the final uh, slide, Tuve, please. Yeah, I, I still have a question for, for maybe all, all the presenters, oh, yeah. if that's fine. Uh, because I'm thinking about that we have discussed here, we have the two, two sustainable development goals, life below water and responsible consumption. So I would still like to hear from all the presenters that, that what uh, main challenges do you see for for res, uh, more responsible consumption. Okay, shall we go in the, in the uh, as we started with with Kari Hutianen first? So, are you prepared to answer? Yeah, thanks, uh, Tuve. Um, um, of course, uh, if you think about the global level um, first, then. then how the population size is, is going to evolve in, in the future that is like a critical issue we heard a little bit about that in, in our morning session and there were different projections for how population develops over time but it's also like technological question as we have heard t t t during this this session there are, are several solutions to 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 reduce the um the footprint ecological fo footprint and and so we should make use of those innovations. So it's a it's a societal issue. It's a technological question, but it's also like an economic issue. So this one were my first quick reactions. Okay, thank you. So well then, Annukka, you had a one minute more to think about it. So you have you have certainly a prepared answer to Tuve. <laughs> Um, making things easy. So I don't know if it's an English word, but like productifying the good choices so that a person who is thinking like, oh, how can I make a better choice for my consumption can simply just look at it and find it and use it instead of spending hours and hours online or driving hundreds of kilometers with a boat or a car trying to find the good solution. All right, thank you. And uh, and the third one was then Christian, please. Yeah, I think the biggest challenge is to 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 change the attitudes and and, and how to get the voters to to look at up, uh, other options and, and 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 how to get them to understand that use 
uses of bioseeds and, and uh, soft coatings is not, not a sustainable solution. And, uh, I, I know that there is good test results and, and, and good, good options. It's just, just a matter of, 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 of 10 minutes to, 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 to go through them and, and, and choose, the, choose the most uh, suitable for your own, own, own use. Thank you. Thank you. And then the, the, the final word to, to Hanna Maria. Well, I need to take the municipality point of view here. So, so I would say that there is a big challenge to really uh, make uh, chemical smart uh, public procurements in, in municipalities. Uh, if, if we want to reduce the hazardous substances loading uh, in our urban areas, it's very important that municipalities that use taxpayers' money, uh, they buy smartly and chemical smartly and that also all the uh, people working for the municipality are aware uh, when they are ordering uh, things to their workplace that that these harmful substances should be should be somehow uh, dealt with before bringing them to the municipality. Okay, Tuve, did you get your answers? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you all. I was just writing in the chat, so yes. Yeah. Great. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay, then we are quite close to the ending of this uh, of this uh, session number three. So now we will have a lunch break or whatever you want to do during the break. Anyway, we ask you to, to join back at quarter past one in the afternoon finish time and then we will get greetings by the deputy mayor of Helsinki Anni Sinnemäki and continue and as well with the results of, of the of this uh, what you have written into the menti. Uh, uh, I would like to thank the 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 four speakers for their interesting and enlightening presentations. I hope they I hope they give you some ideas for, for further thoughts in your organization or in your private lives. And, uh, and uh, I thank you all the participants as well that you have joined us today and special thanks to Tuve who has been our backstage manager and taking care of all the techniques. So, so have a nice, nice uh, short uh, lunch break and then we'll see at quarter past one. The session is over. Thank you. <laughs>